Hi, this is Loop Brader um, at loopbrader.com. Uh, okay, this video is going to be um, a how-to, a demo on how to to switch, how to follow a chart like these to switch between various bicolor patterns. And these are very easy patterns um, to make in a bicolor braid. You've, if you've been learning any of the braids on my website, you might know some of them already. Um, uh, this one might be, this is a bit new in that I haven't, well I think I covered it in Bicolor Loop Magic. Um, yeah, a little bit. So I, um, I'm going to be showing, on my website it will have directions for how to set these up as individual patterns in a braid if you just want to braid a braid with one of these patterns. But the main focus of the uh, tutorial is on how to switch between different patterns, which involves selectively turning or not turning the loops as you ease your way, braid your way into the new pattern. So let's see, Crystal, let's get this sample out and um, you can look at it. I'm going to be, um, I'm not going to do all, I'm not going to braid all of these patterns uh, in this demo. This is just to, to demonstrate how to follow a chart. So let's get this out of the way. This was a, um, here's a braid I made a long time ago. It's pretty worn out now, actually. It's in the, it's in the, um, here's a picture of that in my website. Uh, let's see, I think I will start, well I've already begun, oh, let's show you these. I've already begun the braid that I'm going to do. It's, it's hanging there on the C-clamp. And I'm going to start with this, the divided all dark up pattern. It's a divided braid pattern, not a square braid pattern, but I did use it within this square braid. I used it a few times. Let's find that section. As a, um, for a short little, here we go, for short little interruptions in between these sections of alternating um, stripes. And it's, it is a loop, at least some of it, uh, but when you do it for such a short section, and really only, only the last little bit of it is fully divided, it really doesn't separate and um, you can use it within a square braid. So that's, this is the divided all dark up. It's all light up if you turn it over, but, um, and I was using it as a sort of an accent in between there. I'm going to start the braid with that all dark up because I always, it's, it's sort of a neutral loop to, uh, pattern. I mean, you could start, a loop can be made with you know, all kinds of, you know, well, not all kinds, but many different patterns, but I like the sort of neutral. Here I ended it with a loop of a different pattern, a divided braid. This one you would start with um, the left hand having all dark up and the right hand having all light up to make that divided braid. Anyway, we're going to start with this divided braid section and then I'll show how to use a chart to go to the um, alternating, how to follow this chart to go to alternating stripes and which will, is a square braid pattern. It, it, it will end up being all turned loop transfers which will join the loop into a solid square braid. So let's see if I have the right length here. This looks pretty good. The camera. Okay, so the I've started braiding already. I've started the divided section. I put it back on my C-clamp. This is how I actually prefer to braid with a loop that I'm making uh, suspended over the top of the C-clamp. <coughs> it can be suspended in other ways on something somewhat rigid, like you can put it on onto a ring. That's a ring for hang for a shower curtain. Okay, so I've braided a certain length, that's my figure is long enough, and now I'm going to start following this chart. I'll start with the chart for alternating stripes. See if I can just fold it and 
set it up right now. Lie it down. <clears throat> For alternating stripes. I describe these charts are on my site. If you if you click on the link below this video, if you are on YouTube, YouTube is not my site. YouTube is just what I use to um, upload my videos. So the 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 post on this braid has all the information of which this video is just a part. It has the charts. It has all the rest of the information too. So uh, I've made my divided area. Now I'm going to jo and let's maybe do a, do a few more rows. So one, two. It's probably long enough. I'll do one more. If it's too long, I always undo it later. I'm going to turn this around to finish the top of the braid later. And we'll get into that right now. Okay, so <coughs> let me park the loops here temporarily. In following the chart, the um, each row is one row of braiding, one repetition of... There's only two moves, two green braiding moves in a square braid. This is the left move, the move that happens where the right hand reaches over and gets the left loop, and this is the right move, the right loop transfer, where the left hand reaches over and gets a loop on the right hand. Both of these in the first row must finish, both of these loop transfers must must finish with a dark shank up. So I look at the chart, I see that the first row says dark and dark. Then I look at my loops, and the first loop transfer must finish with dark up. On the other hand, it already has dark up. In a way, I could I could skip this row and just start with the second one, but I'm I'm going I'm going to do it. So I'm going to skip. I, I'm going to not turn this loop because dark is already up. It needs to finish with dark up. Dark is already up, so I take it without turning it. Tighten the next loop transfer the right one also must finish dark up. I look at that loop that I'm about to transfer. It is already dark up, so I take it without turning it. Tighten, dark up. Next row. The next row is light, light. Left transfer light, right transfer light. I look at my loops. Light is not up, so I must turn the loop in taking it. There. Now light is up. That light shank is up. Tighten. The right loop transfer also was light, L for light. So I and I see that dark is up, so I need to turn this loop. Tighten. This chart, unlike many charts, only has two rows. You repeat these two rows for the pattern. So I finished light light. I'm going to go back up and go dark dark light light dark dark. This is a very easily memorizable chart. You don't have to really keep looking at it, which is why I'm, I'm using it as an example. It's it's pretty straightforward. So, and you, if you forget where you are, you can look down at your loops and see what the last transferred ones show. This was the last loop I took, the last loop transfer. It is light. The one before that is on this end. It's light. So I know that my previous row that I did was light, light, LL. And in case I get lost, I can, I can look down here and see what what the last move was, and I can look at this finger and see what the move before that was. You can read your loops. Okay, so I see that the last one I did was light, light. I know that these are alternating. The next one has to be dark, dark. I do not turn it. It's already, the loop is already dark up. So I'm not turning. I am not making standard square braid moves here. This is really pickup. I'm, what's, the term for it is pickup. It means you are selectively turning loops. And right now, I see dark is up. I need dark to stay up, so I don't turn the loop. I'm, sele I'm deciding not to turn it based on the chart, what the chart shows me, and, and well, what I know about this pattern. The next row is light, light. I look at my loop, and I see that dark is up. I want light, so I turn it. On the right, also needs to be light. Dark is up, so I'm going to turn this loop. Okay, I'm back up to dark, 
dark. At this point, my loops are actually all in position for the pattern. At this point, the moves are, are going to be automatic. Each, each row will require me to turn a loop, which is what you do for a... I'm, I'm on row one, dark, dark. Light is up, so I must turn it. On the other side, light is also up, so I must turn it. This will be the case at every row now. I've, my, my loops are in position. This, at this point, I can just braid a square braid because all the, all the moves, each, each row requires me to turn. This is an automatic square braid color pattern. And um, I've now arrived and braided my way into the pattern. And now I can braid this pattern for however long I want. It has a <coughs> two row repeat. Okay, so let's take it off. I'll temporarily park those loops there. Show the camera this pattern, alternating stripes. Now I will switch to another pattern. The easy way to switch, it works in a square braid, not in a flat, because it would tie it together. The easy way to switch is to, if you know what the setup for that loop setup for that pattern is, is then to just turn the loops on your fingers to be in the correct position. That can cause some uh, <coughs> structural discrepancies in the braid at that point where you do it. It can cause some long uh, floats of yarn or some bumps. It can, not necessarily, but it can. It's just neater and cleaner to braid your way into the next pattern. The next pattern I will do with demo following is it the simplest chart of all, is edge pattern. It only has one row. You just repeat this row again and again. It's a one row repeat. The left move is going to be dark, the right move is going to be light, and doing that again and again will end up with edge pattern. And it will be a, a when when my loops get into position after, at the most, for a six loop braid, three rows, doing it for three rows will, at the most, will put these loops into the right position and I will just be turning all my loops. Okay, <coughs> you can memorize this chart very easily. It's left is dark, right is light every time. So. I go to take my first my first loop. I need dark. Light is up, so I'm going to turn it. On the other side, I always want light up. Light is already up, so I am not going to turn that loop. I take it without turning it. Tighten. Left side dark. Dark is already up, so I do not turn. Right side light. Dark is up, so I must turn. Left side I want dark, light is up, so I turn. The right side I want light, light is already up, so I do not turn. At this point, my loops are actually in all in position. I will, in following this chart, I will always be turning my loops. So the chart says left, dark, right, light. Left, light is up, I want dark. I just say to myself, when I'm following it, I just say, dark, and I I don't even say turn or not turn, I say dark, and I know I need to turn it, because it's light, and the other side, light, light, now it's light, dark, I want dark, I want light, dark, and the side light, so I'm making automatic, it's automatic in that I don't need to think anymore. I know now I'm in pattern. I can just braid this square braid pattern that's called, or I call it edge. Let's do a few more moves so the pattern shows. It's nice lengthwise stripes. <coughs> okay, here is edge pattern. And I switched to it. it the switch was completely seamless. There's no... Um, it, it looks. It actually looks a little bit similar to the dark light, dark, all dark up pattern, but it's not. It has all dark up has one black stripe and one light stripe, and this has two of each. So four color uh, columns. Um, I think the next one I should do. Let's see. I'll hang this back up, and let's see if there's a 
slightly more complicated looking. All of these charts are for quite, all of these patterns are very easy. Um, oh, one loop wrong. Let's, okay, let's do dark light alternations. Dark, dark light alternations in a, in a six loop braid. This is the pattern that's extremely easy to, st to set up. It's, you just start braiding a square braid with all the dark shanks up and um, do square braid moves and you come up with this pattern. Usually one is usually making an odd number of loops braid and it would be uh, dark, dark, dark. It wouldn't be an even split like this. There would be dark, 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 in a seven loop braid, dark, 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 and then light, light, light. Uh, but but it's very, it looks very even and simple in a even number of loops braid. So I'll switch to dark light alternations. The first three rows, it's, it's very simple to follow the first three rows. They want dark up for each move. So first row, I want dark up. It's not up, so I turn it. Dark up, so no turn. It's one row. Second row, I want dark up, so I turn that. I want dark up. It's already up, no turn third row. This should be the last one I need to be selectively turning or not turning. I want dark up, so I turn. And I want dark up, so I don't turn. Now I'm at the fourth row, and it's three rows of light, of all light. I should be I am in position now. This this pattern, if you were just to set it up to braid, you would set up with all darks up or all lights up. So I need light, so I turn. This is now going to be automatic square braid moves. I need light, so I turn. Second or fifth row, I need light up, turn, light up, so I turn. Sixth row, I need light up, so I turn. I need light up, so I turn, and I'm back to, I'm at the end of the, the whole, I'm at one pattern repeat, and I'm going to start again at row one, dark up, and I must turn all my loops, so I'm just keeping on, I'll do one more pattern repetition, I'm just keeping on with square braid moves, and I'll do it until my, all the dark shanks are up, and that will have been, there are two pattern repeats. So there, there's let's cut it off. There's two pattern repeats of um, dark light alter alternations following the chart. Say I wanted to get back to um, just oh, here's a good one. I love this pattern, um, One Loop Wrong. It's uh, it's basically a variation of edge. We already did edge pattern up here. Edge is very simple, just has a um, one row repeat. However, when you do One Loop Wrong, the, e the easiest way to switch to it <coughs> excuse me, is to um, switch to edge until you're in pattern for edge and then take one single loop without turning it and keep on then keep on with square braid moves. However, you can chart it this way. So um, this is how it looks all charted out, one full pattern repeat. So I'll do it this way. I'll follow <coughs> and this will also start it will start in pattern. I won't have a little section of edge without the let's find it on the sample braid first. Here is it shows. Here is the section of one loop wrong. And I started in the sample braid, I started from edge and went to one loop wrong. So that's a, a nice way to, to do it actually because and then you can go back to edge and that single that single contrasting loop disappears right into the edge pattern. Here we'll be starting from a, a dark light alternations. And following the chart should put us right into one loop wrong. So row one, light, light. I look at my loop that I'm going to turn. Dark is up. I want light. 
on both sides, left and right. I want light, so there it is, light, light. Row two, dark, light. Dark is already up, so I do not turn. Light is not up, so I turn. Third row, dark, light again. Dark is already up, so I do not turn. Light is not up, so I do turn. Fourth row, dark, dark. Okay, dark is not up. I think I should be in pattern now, and in fact I am. I can see that I am because um, it's. I have all one color up on one hand and all but one color up on the other. Anyway, I'll demonstrate how, from now, from the fourth row on, every row will require a turn. I'm in my square braid automatic pattern of one loop wrong, so dark up. This is fourth row. Dark, dark, so dark up. Dark up requires a turn. Fifth row is dark and light, D-L. I must turn it, and I have to turn it to get light up. Uh, I'm confused now. This six, sixth row. I need dark and light, so I need to turn this dark, light. That's the sixth row. Dark, light. Now I've finished one pattern repeat, and I'm going to start again at row one, which is light, light. And lo and behold, I need to turn. Dark is up, so I turn it for light. And on the other side, dark is up, so I turn it for light. So this is going to be, I, I at this point don't really need to check the chart every time. You can, you can check every time if you want, but you will find, with an automatic pattern, which I told you this is, with an automatic pattern, square braid pattern like edge, you will, um, you will be turning every loop. Okay, so um, I've done a few rows of of one loop wrong. You can see, the, let's get it. You can see here. Um, if you want to segue, I, to make it look good, I would do a lot more rows than that. I mean, that's not enough. It's, it's going to be too confusing, really, for a, a real braid, but just for demonstration purposes, if I wanted to go from here to plain edge, to edge, dark, um, turning, uh, turning loops to be dark up on one side and to be light up on the other, this is um, a very good place to make the switch because my oddball loop, the one that's out of sync of all the others, is ready to be transferred. So I will follow it will only take one row here to, to correct into edge edge pattern. So let's switch to edge pattern now. Every transfer on the left I want to be dark, and every transfer on the right I want to end up light. So I go to do the first one. I want it to end up dark. It's already dark, so I do not turn it. At this point, all the loops are in position for edge. They're all one color up on on the left side and the other color up on the right side. So I can just switch to turning every transfer, and I will be back at edge pattern. Edge has a one row repeat. Every time you transfer a loop, it's, it turns over, and you get the other color up on the other side, and unlike any other of the patterns, the the color distribution stays the same, which is what creates the lengthwise striping. Um, so here we have a, a fairly long section of edge, and I'm not sure what there was an. Let's just park these for a minute. Uh, I think at this point I will demonstrate. Um, making a loop, a divided loop, with the, like this one I did in the sample braid. I don't actually even talk about this 
divided pattern in the tutorial. I might add it. Uh, at this end of the braid I did this divided loop pattern, which is comes straight out of edge, actually. It's all light up on one side and all dark up on the other side, and now I'm going to take loops without giving them a turn. And this will cause an opening in the braid. Causes the two layers of the square braid to divide, not to be united anymore. At this point, I'm back. At my I, I'm watching my loops, and I'm back to all dark up on one side and all light up on the other side. And I think I'll close off my braid with six six turns. One, two. Three, four, five, six. In a six loop braid, doing six loop transfers completely links it, um, switch, all the loops have now switched hands. It's completely tied together, I guess you might say, this braid. And I'm going to finish with two little braidlets. Uh, let's see, I'll do... At the very beginning I can decide if I want an all black braidlet and an all light colored one, all yellow one, or if maybe I want to have... I'll turn one loop, so I'll have a mix of colors on this side, and then I just start braiding. Tug those a little bit, the ones that are left hanging. Braiding a um, divided Three loop braid will make two little bitty little bitty pigtail braids, two little um, braidlets. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other end of the braid that I had uh, left a kind of unbraided hank above the I can make these any braidlets as long as I want. I don't know. I'm not going to braid all the way down to the end of the loops because that's too far and that would be too long. So then I can just um, tie off. I always tie off up, around, and down. An overhand knot that goes up around and down because that makes the, and I bring the second knot over the first before I tighten it, that makes the uh, end hang downward instead of sprung up. Side, round, down, off, and now I have two little braidlets. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side, and tie them off, and then I'll finish the ends at the top. Okay, thanks for watching.